Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at uh, the certificates uh, option here in Maverick Server. Now certificates or SSL certificates are uh, secure socket layer certificates. And basically what that means is that means that uh, they are encrypted communications between different devices uh, that also verify uh, the identity of those devices to some extent. And so what that means is that if you were to communicate uh, with a website or something like that, uh, you want to make sure that the identity of that website is who they say they are, that it's not a spoof site or something like that where you're giving personal information. And so if it's got a certificate on it, it allows you to check to make sure that that, uh, that server or that website is who they say they are. And so it does create those secure communications back and forth between uh, those, uh, those different websites and services so that you have a layer of security. Now, uh, there are a couple of different kinds of uh, certificates or SSL certificates. There are self-signed certificates, which means that those are ones that you generate yourself on the server that no third party has verified uh, that your certificate is real, uh, and that it really is you. Uh, but they still allow for secure connections for you with all your devices. Other people will just get a warning that says, uh, hey, we don't know who this person is. Do you want to accept the certificate anyway? And then you have the uh, verified certificates, and those are usually the ones that you pay for, where a third party verifies that you are who you say you are. And then that way you really don't see any warnings. It just sort of your computer accepts uh, the SSL certificate and communications go back and forth uh, normally. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to take a look at uh, the service built into server. I'm going to show you uh, the self-signed uh, certificates uh, that you normally would use as a home user. You probably don't need to purchase one. And then for those of you that want to purchase one, I'll show you how to do that as well. So here we are in the uh, actual certificates uh, area here. You can see that uh, right away I've got uh, the settings area that says secure services using, and I've got my SSL certificate here, and you'll notice that it says self-signed. Uh, as soon as you create uh, you know, your DNS and you set up your host name, the server automatically does create this self-signed certificate for you so that you can uh, use it on different services that you want to have security on. And so that was automatically created for me. If I just click here, you can see that I've got my self-signed certificate here. And when this is on, this means that any service that I want to use uh, SSL on, that I want to have uh, you know, secure connections on, will we'll have the certificate here to make sure that that happens. And so let me just click Custom to show you what that looks like. What I can do is I can actually assign the certificate to different services depending on which ones I want to be secure. Now understand that when I do this, for instance, on the websites area, I've got the certificate there. That allows me to uh, signify that some of my websites, I want them to be uh, secure connections, that I want them to go through SSL. If you're on a website, you would see the HTTPS uh, symbol up there. You'd see the little lock up there in Safari. That means that it is a, a website that's using uh, this SSL, an SSL certificate, and so it allows for those connections. And so as soon as I do that, it'll change the port uh, through which those connections go from 80 to 443. Uh, so it also kind of a lot, uh, generates some of that uh, traffic on different ports. Uh, but you can see that I can set up a certificate for all of these different services here and make sure they're secure. And I can do them individually or not. If I just click this, I can say none, which means that I wouldn't want my calendar and contacts uh, to be on a secure connection. So I can do them one at a time, which would create a custom setup, or I can just leave it on everything and it will just basically show the certificate here instead of the word custom. So that's the difference there. Now you'll notice down here it says trusted certificates. I don't have any. Uh, I can click the plus button here to get a trusted certificate. Uh, or if I just click this show all certificates, you'll see that my certificate, the self-signed one, does show up here. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it says it expires in two years, so the server generates that for two years. So let me just double click on this. And then this shows you the information on the certificate. Uh, it gives some information on when it was created uh, and when it expires. And you can see it expires in November 21st, 2015. You can see it is a self-signed certificate and it gives you this little warning that the certificate has not been verified by a third party. And in server, those certificates usually show up with this, uh, this kind of gold outline around them. If they are verified, uh, they usually have blue around them. And so that, that's visually how you can tell the difference. Now, if you have a situation where your certificate is expiring uh, and you need to fix it, you just click this Renew button down here, and it will automatically renew it uh, for the next term. Because what will happen is the server will warn you when the certificate is going to uh, need to be renewed, and so this is the easy way to come in here and do this. You can also do it from your alerts area as well. Uh, but just right away, it'll renew it for you and take care of it, and you'll be in good shape. All right, so that's for future when you get to that point. So let me just click OK. 
So as you can see, here's here's there's no other certificates in here. Now, if I just come down here, I can obviously I can delete the certificate by highlighting it and clicking the minus button. Or if I click this little plus button down here, I've got a couple of options. I can get a trusted certificate, and that's the one where a third party verifies it, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, I can create a certificate identity, or I can import a certificate identity if I've already created one. So if I click create a certificate identity, I just want to do this to show you uh, that you can create an identity and walk through the wizard here. So you can put a name. Uh, on your certificate and uh, whatever that is, you know, if you want to put your server.example.com or whatever that is up here, uh, you can have the different identities if it's going to be a self signed root or leaf. Uh, leaf isn't really going to be uh, coming to play for you as a home user at all. You won't need that. Uh, so the self signed root is what you would use. And then you also have uh, different certificate types if you wanted to. You can do server, client, uh, you can do the, uh, the S MIME, which is uh, for email. You could set up a VPN client or server certificate, uh, or code signing certificate, or even a custom one. So it gives you uh, a lot of different options. In fact, if you click custom, then it allows you to go out and pick one that you want to use. Let's click, click cancel there. Uh, you can also override defaults if you wanted to. Uh, at any time, you can click learn more here, and that will take you into the uh, help menu to help you dis determine which one you want to you wanna use here. Since I don't want to create one, I'm not going to go through that process. I'm just going to close this. But that's one way that you can actually create that, uh, that certificate. Now, the other thing you could do is if you did want to create uh, a certificate that was verified by a third party, you'd have to go purchase one. And so let me just pull this up. There are various uh, websites that do sell these certificates. For instance, here's one, uh, Namecheap, uh, GoDaddy, those type of websites will sell them. You can see right here it's got SSL certificates with a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. Uh, they even give away, uh, not give away, but they uh, charge a cheaper price if you uh, register a domain with them. Uh, but let's just go into, um, let's just go to the Komodo SSL certificates. So right here you can see that you can buy uh, a certificate for $7.95 a year. And this is probably fine uh, for most people uh, that are using home servers. Uh, you can go with a wildcard one, which uh, secures multiple subdomains. So if you've got a lot of different subdomains that you're running on your website, you want to do that. This is for a single domain. Uh, then you can uh, you can go to the essential one, which which is kind of in between, gives you a few extra uh, deals there, and then you've got another wildcard one over here uh, that covers a whole bunch of different domains. So you got different ones that you can choose from. But what you would do is you would go in and just purchase uh, one of these certificates, and then you would uh, buy that, and you'd have that set up. Now what would happen then is you would get uh, in order to purchase this, what it would ask you for. Let me just pop this down. It would ask you for uh, code that you would put into your certificate. So you'd have to come in here and say get a trusted certificate, and you would go through this wizard uh, to create a signing request. Now this is how uh, the outside carrier verifies that you are who you say you are. So if I just click next, I put in my host name here. So let's say there's my host name. You put in a contact uh, email address. So you want to put in an email address that uh, they're going to send the information to or one that you've got contact for. So I'm just going to put one in right here. You'd have your organization. Uh, I'll just put that in there, put my name in there. You'd have a department. You know, I'll just put none. You'd have a town. None. I'm just going to make this up. California, United States. Okay, then you go next. And then what it's going to do is it's going to generate this code right here. And you can see it's just a bunch of uh, seemingly random numbers and letters and things in there. Now what this is, is this is kind of your unique ID uh, that you're going to copy. And you would copy this and then come back to where you bought your certificate and paste it into their form as you're going through the checkout process of getting your certificate. All right, That's how you would do that. Then what would happen, uh, let, me just, uh, let me just click out of here, say finish. See how it creates it right there and it's pending? That's because that means I sent a sign request. I created a signing request, and so it's waiting for me to actually uh, get the certificates that I need. All right, so it's waiting for those things to come in. And so if I just click on this, you can see I can even view the signing request if I want to, and there's the information there. Now what's going to happen is you'll get an email where they'll send you a couple of certificates. And so what you're going to do is you want to drag the files that they gave you and send, drag them right in here, and that's going to add them to your server. Okay, You're going to get that certificate. Now, you'll also sometimes get an intermediate certificate that uh, you can try to drag in here. It depends on the provider. Or what you may need to do is install that yourself. Let me just click OK here. You may need to install that yourself. Now, to do that, you, want, you need to go into your keychain, and you're going to want to go to System and Certificates, and you'll drag that intermediate certificate right in here. And then that will install it because that intermediate certificate creates a chain 
uh, through your computer that allows it to verify that your server is who you say you are. And so a lot of times you need that intermediate certificate for that to work. Let me just come over here. Okay, so that shows you how to set that up. Shows you how to set up a self-signed one, which, I, like I said, for most people is fine. Uh, because if you're using the, the uh, server yourself, you don't really, I mean, you can verify your own identity. You don't need someone else to do it. But if you got a lot of outside people doing it, then you might want to get a purchase certificate that's verified by a third party. All right, so that's how the certificate service works in Maverick Server. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.